Hello everybody, it's Mary and it's all right. I'm going to talk about twin needles today. And there's very important things to know about twin needles. First is the size of the twin needle because the higher the number of the twin needle, the distance between the needles becomes greater. So that's the main difference. So if you look down here at the, um, the twin needles I have here, I have three examples. This one here is a 2.5, and here's the twin needle. This one's a 3.0, and there it is, and a 4.0, and there it is. So take notice to see in the difference between the two needles, which I'm, the distance from side to side, the opening in the center becomes greater the higher the number. Twin needles, just like a standard needle, has a flat side, which is always going flat to the back when you insert it. But then down here is the bridge, I call it a bridge, that is going to hold the two twin needles. And when you go to insert it first, um, and this is going to be for even a standard needle, I've gotten into a new practice because one time my needle fell inside my machine, and then you you're in panic mode, but all you gotta do is put either a piece of paper or a piece of fabric under your press of foot. So then when you go to loosen your needle and God forbid you drop it, it won't fall in the machine. So I'm just gonna put that one on the side. So here's my twin needle that I'm gonna use and this is the 2.5. Again, like I said, flat to the back. So I'm gonna insert this in here and then I'm gonna tighten my screw and there's my twin needle. When you do have a twin needle, any of you that do have a needle threader, you cannot use it. You have to thread the needles manually. That's a downside, but the best side is gonna make it even worth it. So then up here, if you notice, I have the standard spool and then I have a secondary spool pin. Depending on your brand, spool pins come in different shapes. They might be this, or on the machine itself, you might have built in uh, pin, spool pins. This one, I put the spool pin on here, and then I'm gonna put this on here. So I have my other thread over here, and then my second spool here. And I love exp uh, experimenting with different color threads uh, with twin needle. In over here, I have a variegated thread that you can see from, this is a, a YLI, and I'm putting that on here. And then over here, I have a standard metla thread in red. And it just it, um, makes it very interesting with the variegated threads and decorative stitches, if you can do it. Now, when you're gonna thread the machine, just like a, a standard needle, make sure that your press of foot is not down. When you're, even with a standard single needle, your press of foot has to be up. When you're going to thread, with twin needles, do not take two threads together and thread them together. Always do one at a time. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna put it here, up here, come down, come up, go into the take up lever. All is normal like a single needle. Then I'm gonna put the thread behind the guide and I'm gonna thread the needle manually. So. And it, so this one is on my left, this one's on my right, basically. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna thread the left thread on the left needle. I got my one done. I'm gonna raise the foot again, because I had put it down to thread the needle, it was easier. Then I'm gonna thread the next one. Now those of you that have certain machines, inside here you're gonna see two discs that will be visible. And when you're using a twin needle, it is recommended by those brands that you put one thread to one side of the disc and the other thread to the other side, so you're separating them. On this particular machine, it's not necessary. So I'm just doing the same path as I did before. Now I'm gonna thread the needle on the right. Come here. Let's see. Okay. All right, twin needles. You got two, two needles going at the same time. So you're getting two rows of stitches that will be parallel to one another. And I'm on plain straight stitch. So like I was saying, when you're using a twin needle base, you're getting two rows of stitches that are going together. So here, if you notice, it's just sewing along. And 
in. Come here. So here, I have my two rows of stitches. Underneath, you're gonna have what looks like a zigzag, and that's normal, because underneath you don't have two threads. You have your one bobbin thread, so you will get that on the bottom. That could be really interesting if you wanted that as your decorative stitch. Think about it, if you put the right side of your fabric facing down, then you could get that look up on the top of the fabric, which is really cool. All right, so now on a lot of the machines, you're going to have a setting on the machine that you would touch that says it's a twin needle. So it's gonna control things that you can do with a twin needle. Um, for instance, if you have a stitch that's ex a decorative stitch, as an example, that's very wide, that's going to keep you from doing that decorative stitch because twin needles, when you're doing a stitch that has a width, the needle goes from side to side. So if you are got a, dec a wide decorative stitch, when it goes side to side, there is a chance that one of your twin needles is going to hit the press of foot because it's too wide. So some machines will say, no, you can't do that stitch with, that with the twin needle. But there are gonna be many stitches that you can do with the twin needle. So for instance, on this machine, I'm gonna pick a feather stitch. Now, most of you know what a feather stitch looks like, especially if you're a quilter. And I'm gonna go to a, a stitch here. Number 31 is a feather stitch. And I do have this machine set for twin needle. So if I go to sew, Let's see, is it gonna let me? Yes, it is. It's gonna do the feather stitch. Now there's a chance that I could pick another stitch and go, no, 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 you can't do that stitch. But this is what gets, is so much fun. If you look now, I'm gonna take this out and show you. Look at that, that is so cool. Using, I, remember, I have a variegated thread in one needle, which is the one on the right here. And then I have a solid thread on the other side. You could use variegated threads on both sides, but now you're taking a standard straight stitch, which you could use for your top stitching or just um, hemming. But now I'm taking it to another level of being creative with a twin needle. And I'm telling you, I have such a good time with this stuff. I could go on and on all day long. Let me just see if I can pick another uh, stitch. And oh, when you are picking decorative stitches, most of your machines are gonna tell you to put on a different foot. And I'm gonna make a point on this right now. It's got, no, it's really not to do with the twin needle, but when you pick a decorative stitch, and it, a decorative stitch is raised, it's not flat like a straight stitch. But if you notice here with a, a standard foot, which is this one, and a decorative stitch foot, there's a channel right here. And this one is totally flat. So when you're doing decorative stitches and the stitch is trying to go under here, there's no groove like there is with a decorative stitch foot. So I refer to this as the Midtown Tunnel. You're driving your car and you need a channel to drive through. So it's the same thing with a decorative stitch. Your decorative stitch is gonna ride through this channel and it's gonna make the fabric move much easier. So yeah, I'm gonna put this foot back on. I'm gonna put this one on instead of the standard foot. So now I'm gonna try another stitch. Let's see, I'm going to pick a, oh, there's so many choices. Sometimes I don't know which one I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try 26, which is a scallop stitch. Okay, let's go for this one. Oh, this is cool, this is nice. So twin needle work can be just utility wise as far as top stitching, but also now take it to another level and use it with your decorative stitches. It can be so much fun. Sometimes you're gonna play all day trying to figure out which stitch to do. You're not gonna get your project done. Oh, have a good day, bye.